Hello, welcome to another episode in this video series. In this episode, we are going to learn what Python scripts, modules, packages, libraries, and frameworks are. So these five keywords are usually used interchangeably by developers or programmers. But technically speaking, there is slightly difference, differences between them. And in this episode, I will, I will attempt to explain some of the differences and some of, their, some of the similarities between them. So let me change the color. Maybe this team color is more suitable for view. So I think this should be better. Or let me just take it to something like this. OK, I think this, this should be OK. So uh, a script. A script is basically just a text file that has the extension .py. And the script will usually contain variables, functions, classes, and all sorts of other Python objects. But the intention of the script is written to run when the file is executed. So all this while, we have been using scripts. If I switch to my Jupyter Lab, so here in the Jupyter Lab environment, inside our project folder, you see that we have script one, script two, three, four, and so on. So all these script files are scripts that we have written in the previous videos. And if you look at them, they are just pure Python objects that are made up of variables functions and so on so a script is just a file a text file with the extension .py and the intention of a script is to run the content when it is executed so example of a script is what i've shown you and you can give it any other name just as you have seen here as long as it has the extension .py then it's a python script then a module, on the other hand, it is similar to a script, but it is mainly written so that it can be imported into other programs or applications. So the intention of a module is for you to import it into another application. But even though the content can still be the same thing as that of a script, so it is also a file. A module is also a file with the extension .py and the contents are usually variables, functions, classes, and so on. But the intention of a module is for you to import it into another program. So an, an example of a module is the following. So this is a module. Anti-graffiti is a module. Maths, OS, IMP, importlib, RE, all these are examples of modules. So later on, we are going to take a look at. Uh, later on, we are going to take a detailed look at some of these uh, modules. But at this point, try to understand that the difference between a module and a script is that a module is written with the intention of it being imported into another script, while a script is written with the intention of running the content when it is executed, when the file is executed. Then in the hierarchy, after modules, we have packages. So packages are collections, a collection of modules. So when you have a folder with several modules in it, with an additional special file named underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. So that becomes a package. And examples of packages are pandas, matplotlib, request, beautiful soup, and so on. So all these are examples of packages. So usually when you open them, you see that they are files or they are folders that contain several .py files, which are modules, with another special uh, file or module called underscore underscore init underscore underscore py 
So for a package to be called a folder containing Python files or Python modules to be called a, a package, it must contain this very special file. So later on, we will talk more about all of this. Then next in the hierarchy is library. So a library is just more complex than a package. Aside that, every other thing still remain the same or applicable. So an example of a package are TensorF TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, Tino, and so on. So all these are machine learning libraries. Then the last in the hierarchy is called a framework. So a framework is more complex than a library, while a library is more complex than a package. Then why a package is more complex than a module, and so on. So framework examples of frameworks are Flux, Django, Fast API, and so on. So we also have other examples, as you can see. We have WX Python, KV. All these are examples of frameworks. So let's take a closer look at modules, since modules is like the basis of all the complex packages, libraries, and frameworks that we have. So basically, there are two types of modules. We have the built-ins, and then we have the uh, user or third-party defined uh, modules. So if you go to this website, you have a list of modules, and then you get to know more what modules are. So let's open up the website and see what we have there. So as you can see on this page, where we have the Python standard library, you can see that we have building functions, building constant types, and so on. And then we have uh, the modules listed according to their operations. So we have uh, a lot of modules in Python. And if you go to this page where they are listed in alphabetical order, so the Python module index, you see all the available modules that comes with their Python. So some of them, we have used them, while uh, some of them we have not used them. So this is an excellent uh, presentation of all the available modules in Python. As you can see, the names are listed on the left-hand side, then the descriptions are here. So let's take a look at some of some popular ones, like Calendar. Calendar is a is a module that has that is used for working with calendars. So let's see. There is the CSV module. So the CSV two is there. So for it, for write, it is used to write and read tabular data and from the limited text files. So let's see. We have the date time. We have the decimal. Yes, we have a lot of them. We have the JSON. We are going to work with some of this in the subsequent videos. So if you want to learn more about modules, you make sure that you read the content of these three web pages, including this. So I'm going to provide you with the link in the video description. Uh, modules or packages can only be imported once. So you you can only import a module once, and after that, even if you recall the import statement, it won't it won't work. So let's take a look at how we can import some of these modules. So like this maths maths module, let's import it and see how it looks like. So if I go back. Here and then open up the Python console. Minimize this. So to make use of a module, I just need to say import and then the name of the module. And then straight away the module is imported into my Python environment and I can make use of it. So let's see the content of what the mass is. So I can use dir and then type in mass. Hit enter. And then remember that the DIR is a function that will list all the methods and attributes of a particular object. 
So here we call it on the maths module we imported. And then you can see that we have all of these attributes and their functions that we can make use of in Python. So you can see we have a, a lot of things like uh, the E, the uh, sine, cosine, square root, tan, pi, and so on. So if you want to make use of the, any of them, you just type in maths and then the dot, then you call the, the object you want to make use of. So this is the value for the E. E stand for I've forgotten the I think is this this should be the Euler Euler formula or Euler, Euler value. Then you can also do the same thing for pi. Pi is py. Yeah, this is the value of pi. So instead of writing the whole of this each time you are making use of each time you are writing a program. So Python has made it easy for you by just importing this and then you have the whole of these functions to play around with. So, for example, like uh, the sign, if I want to calculate the sign of a, of, a, of a number or of an angle, I just call the maths, then sign, this is sign of 30, and then the value is given to me straight away. So, I don't need to do the calculations manually. I just call the functions and then make use of it. So, that is that about uh, the maths. We are going to work with it in future. But now, in this video, we are only taking a look at how to import them and how to make use of them. Let's import this module and also this module. Then this, this, these are some, these are just fun modules that we can always make use of in Python. So let's explore them and see what they are. So if I go back and then say import this. So import this will import what is known as the, the Zen of Python. So as you can see, this is the Zane of Python, and it's written by Tim Peters. So you can see the content. It says beautiful is better than ugly, explicit is better than implicit, simple is better than complex, and all up to the end. I think there are about 23 of, 23 of them also, or 24 of them. So this is called the Zane of Python. So if you remember, I may mention that you can only import a module once. So if I repeat, if I try to import this, let me clear the screen. Then if I try to import this module, it won't work. So you can see it doesn't work. This module is also displayed in Zeno Python, but now I'm calling it because I've called it earlier on. If I call it now, it won't work. Let's import another module. So this is the anti-gravity module. So this module will open up a, a web page where it will display the anti-gravity comic. So if I enter it, it should open up a web page on my browser and then display the anti-gravity comic. So here we are. As you can see, this is all the modules do, the module does. So the module is called the anti-gravity. And whenever you import it, it will open up this uh, web page for you. Where you can see the comic from this uh, anti gravity. So, but that is all the module does. So, if I try to import it the second time, it won't work simply because you can only import a module once. So, this is a proof that you can only import a module once. But if you need to re import it, you can actually reload. If I go back, there is a module that you can use to reload the import statement. So I think it is called IMP or import import label. Let's 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 check IMP. This it should be under IMP. Let's see if I go back and then import IMP. Then let's see what we have under IMP. So here I just call the DIR on IMP. And then you can see as you can see these are all the uh, methods and attributes that we can use in it. But actually, let me check the help. So I'm going to use the help function on it. So help on IMP, and then you'll see that. Let me actually make this larger. Yeah. 
this is better so this is the help on the module name imp so the name of the module is an mp and then this is where you find about the library this is a link to the official documentation so the following documentation is one generator this module provides the component needed to import a function okay so in most cases it is prefer to consider the model functionality so this is the help and then let's see if it has anything to do with uh, reloading yeah so you can see this is a reload reload module even though it is deprecated but you can still make use of it so reload the module and return it so i think we can still make use of it so if i call it let me, let me see we are trying to import import this so it doesn't work so i will use the imp imp dot reload and then the module i want to reload is called this so you can see it has it reloaded the module and then it called it called it so that's the function of uh, the reload method or function within uh, the IMP. So this is one way of reloading a module. Then I go back to here. Yeah, I think import lib should be the newer version of uh, IMP. And then we we'll have the RE. So all these are different modules that you can make use of. You can play around with. So now let's take a look at where we can find the part to the modules we imported so let's 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 say we want to take a look at the location where the os module is located on our machine so we can do that by importing os so after importing it of course i can just i can just do help on os and then from the help documentation that opens that opens the console I can see all the available uh, functions and methods that are from, uh, that are within the module. But the interesting part I want to take a look at is is this the file. The OS file is located at this location on my machine, so which I can actually navigate to and then open it up. So let me open up this location on my machine in the file explorer. So I'll simply go there now. I'll just, I'll just copy this part and then open it up in the file explorer. So this is the location, as you can see. And then what we are looking for is the os.py. So here I can just search for os.py and then you can see this is the module. So you can see the module is just a file. When I open it up in my text editor, you see that it's a file that has import statements, functions, objects, variables, constant. You can also have classes and so on. So this is the os.py module. So I can go back and then check for other modules. Let's, let's actually see where the, this module is coming from. So if I say help on, on this, and then you can see from the help documentation instead of from here help on this so this is the module the name is this and then it has this data these variables and then the file is located almost in the same part with the other one so i can simply go back to the folder and then i'll search for this and then this is it here so if i open it up in the text editor you see that this is all it contains so it contains something that looks like garbage but this is actually not a garbage it is a kind of a text written using the cipher algorithm i think this it make use, make use of the cipher root 13 algorithm so where i think if you if you're interested you can just google uh, cipher root 13 algorithm and that is what they use in writing this text so it's not a, it's not a big deal so it basically reverses uh, the text to the beautiful uh, 
text is the beautiful outline you see when you import the this model so when i say import this so it doesn't work same way. let me use the imp to reload it now let me actually make use of this new the newer version import lib to see if i can reload it so if i say import lib then i can do something like uh, dir to see the available uh, functions and i think yes import module reload yeah so this is it so it has the function so i will just say import lib dot reload yes reload and then type in the module i want to reload so this is it so this beautiful text is actually what we see here when it is being uh, translated using the cipher algorithm so this is the first line and i think that is what is equivalent to this so beautiful is better than ugly it's actually written as this so if you, if you don't believe it let me copy it go to the web and then search for root 13 cipher and then let's see how it is done so we here i'll just write root 13 cipher and let me see let me see if there is a solution on the web for this Yeah, I think uh, this is what I was looking for. So if I type the garbage, you see that the garbage actually turns to something meaningful. Beautiful is better than ugly. So if I go back and copy the rest, let me actually just copy everything and then use the root 13 cipher to translate it. So as you can see, this is root 13 cipher. And then you can see that the translation is exactly what we have here. The last one says namespace are one working great idea. Let's do more of this. So go back. And then you see that the last sentence is actually correct. So there are many ciphers, but root 13 is the popular one. If I change it to root 2. Can see that it doesn't make sense if i change it to root 20 doesn't make sense but root 13 is a popular one is the exact one that was used in uh, making of this uh, model so this is how to locate a model file in p to a model file in uh, in python and then you can also make use of this if you don't want to use the help to check for the part of the mode, we can make use of underscore underscore file to check for the part of the mode. So let's say we want to use the this. So I just need to do this dot, and then it shows me the part. So the same thing too for anti gravity. Let's let's do the same thing for anti gravity. Let me copy it to avoid making typing mistakes. So I copy the name of the module. If I now enter it here, and then enter, and then it will show me the path to that module. So the module is located somewhere here, somewhere at this part. So if I go back to the location and then search for anti-gravity, this is it. If I open it up in my text editor, you see that this is the anti-gravity module. So you can see it's, it's a simple module that just has a function which opens up this uh, web URL and that is all. So this is how to locate uh, modules, especially the built-in modules in Python. Then uh, we let's quickly take a look at how we can work with third-party modules. So in the case of third-party modules, uh, usually the model will be hosted on this 
uh, web URL, which is the Python package index uh, homepage, the PyPy. So let's quickly load the website and see how it looks like. So this is the homepage of the Python package index. And this is where third party modules are being hosted. So as at the time of recording this video, there are over 400,000 projects and over 3 million releases with over 6 million files and 600,000 users. People like you and me write solutions and then package them as modules or packages and then host them on this uh, uh, repository for other to download and make use of. So if you are, if you are, if you, if you will ever write a Python program to be shared with the community, you are going to make use of a file that has .py extension, and then host it in a place like this for others to download and install it. So usually, when you search for a Python package or if a Python module, you get here and then you download it or you copy the installation part and then install it using a, what we known as a PIP, PIP. So let's, let me quickly demonstrate maybe one. So let me just see, let me just search for GIS keyword. And then let's see how many, what kind of a module we will get. So as you can see, we have over 760 uh, projects returned based on this uh, keyword. But let me let me reframe the search to map. So based on the keyword map, we have over ten thousand plus projects. So if you use you can search or filter the result based on framework, based on topics, based on development status, based on license, based on programming language, based on operating system, and so on. So let's assume we found what we're looking for. You can even sort by trending or by relevance or by date of last update. So by trending, these are the trending packages or modules based on the map keyword. So let's say we found what we are looking for. And uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find the popular one. Let's say, for example, something like pandas. So I'm searching for the keyword pandas. So let me sort by relevance. You can see it, it, it returned about 9,500 projects. So and this is all oh, these are pandas. I think uh, for data structure, I think this is the This is the popular pandas. Yeah, that is it. So it's a powerful data structure analysis toolkit. So usually when you, you will land on the on the project page that, look, that looks like this when you search for a Python mode. So you just need to copy this. When you copy it, then you go to your uh, Python. So just open up, go to a Python interpreter or wherever you install a Python. And then you enter this on the command line. If you just open Python, Python uh, your command line where you have Python installed and then just type pip install pandas or just any other, any library that you want to install and then that will install the, the software or the package or the module for you. So in this video, I'm not showing you how to install. I have a separate video where I actually demonstrated on how to install third party uh, libraries in the Python that came with the QGIS environment. So I'm going to provide a link and then you can use to make use of that to install any library that you want. So in this video, we are only talking about uh, the modules and then the, and how they work. So uh, to continue with the third party modules. So basically that is how you can find third party modules on this repository and then search for them and then install them. 
So another place where you can find a third party modules is on this unofficial window binary uh, website. So this is actually a website that is uh, maintained by Christopher Golki. Let me open up the website so that you see the content. So this is the unofficial window binary for Python extensions. So on this page, you have so many, a lot of uh, Python libraries or modules that you can just download the wheel. So if you download the wheel file, that is the WHL file, then you can now pip install, then provide the path to this uh, wheel, end of this wheel file that you downloaded. And then you install it. So let's, for example, let's say you want to install OpenCV. You just need to go to search for OpenCV and then download the one that is compatible with your Python environment. So for example, this is C Python 3.7 and then the Windows is uh, Win32. So if you are using Windows 32, you can use this. If you are using Windows 64 bit AMD 64, you now use this. So this will download a wheel file and then you can now install using pip pip then install space install then the part to this file you downloaded on your machine so this is an, an unofficial uh, repository but the officially maintained repository by, by the python community is, is this one so these are how you can get uh, third party modules and then install them so like if you install them then you can always import and then make use of them so like in my own case, I have installed some couple of uh, third party Python models such as pandas. So we say import pandas, pandas. So this will install, this will import pandas and then I can make use of it within my Python, uh, within my QGIS Python environment. So I have a separate video where I demonstrated how to install uh, a third party uh, library or module in the QGIS uh, Python environment. So it is good to know that since uh, this video series is on GIS, we are actually making use of QGIS. It is good for you to know that there are specific modules that are related to GIS and uh, map making, and some of them are listed here. So we have the OGR, digital, and OGR the PyQGIS, so I want to make use of it, of this in subsequent videos. We have the ArcPy, if you, are, if you work with the S3 ArcGIS, so this is an important module for an, an, an important module for you to learn. We have the PyProge, we have the RSGIS lib, GeoPandas, Volume, GMAP, and a lot of other uh, GIS based modules or libraries. So here on this website, there are a list of GIS uh, uh, libraries or modules. So let's open up the website and see what we have there. So as you can see, this is the Python Geospatial. So on this page, you see that we have all these uh, different GIS-based libraries or modules. If you check the other website too, we have all Python based uh, modules that you can make use of that you can always download and install and then make use of them. So the list is actually a huge list. So in your in your career, you it's not necessary for you to make use of the whole of these uh, packages, but at least it is good for you to know that they exist and there are people out there that are actually using them. To carry out different uh, GIS and mapping related uh, tasks in Python. So, this is just an example. So, later on, we are going to work with some of them in uh, subsequent uh, videos. Okay, all we have been saying about modules are also applicable to packages, libraries, and frameworks. So, the only difference is that here we are looking at a structure where we have modules in directories and subdirectories so all we have all that applies to a module 
will also apply to a package. So let's quickly take a look at some packages. If I go back to my directory where I have my modules, you will see that we have a bunch of modules which are all of these files. Then we have folders. So these folders are actually packages. And as you can see, you have uh, so many of them. This is the SQLite 3 package. You can see it has a special file called the init. Let me open it and see what it contains. So this is the content of the init file. It contains just a bunch of comments and then just a single line of import. So this import says import from SQLite 3 db db api2 import all so we'll take a look at what this means later on so let's close it go back to the folder and then you can see we have so many other other packages and modules okay this is an interesting module too the total let me open it and see the content so this is the total module if you know what it, what the total module does you will definitely be interested in looking at how it is being implemented. So this is this. So what? <clears throat> we are looking at uh, packages. So we have a lot of packages here. And then we also have a sub package. We also have a sub package where we have a uh, side packages folder and a lot of other sub packages in it, including some other uh, modules. So here we also have, I saw the Jupyter Notebook, I saw the OGR, uh, OSR, and so on. Let me open up this OGR and see the content. Okay. So the model just contain just three or four lines of code, which imports osgeo.gital. So from osgeo.gital, it imported this deprecation warning. And then from osgeo.ogr, it imported all. So this is a good way of actually learning from other people's code. So when you play around with these packages and these uh, modules, you will actually learn how other how professionals other professionals implemented their code. This is pandas. You can open it up and then just Check around. Let's check the init file. And as you can see, this is the content of the init file for pandas. It contains a lot of uh, codes there. So there are so many other ones. This is a uh, ginger, ginger two. So if you know what ginger is, it's just like a templating uh, package for flags and uh, the Django frame web framework. So this is the content. So you can play around with it, just check around how, see how the codes are being implemented and then that will give you a good idea of how things are done. Now this is the Jupyter module and it just contains just four lines of code, as you can see. So if I go back. So all these folders are actually packages. So I think I will just pick one and then use it as a, as a sample to produce or create our own uh, package. This is the Tikinta uh, module or package. And as you can see, the folder just contains some other modules, that's some other Python file. And uh, so these are just some popular ones. We have the email, so the email module contains several modules and then a subdirectory. So one thing you should notice is that virtually all the packages contain this special file called underscore underscore init. So this is a collection package. If I open it, you see that it has a bunch of files and it has this special donder uh, attribute or donder variable. And it contains some other bunch of files. So the easiest way to for you to understand what is going on here is for us to actually create our own uh, module and packages. 
So we are not going to create a complex uh, code or complex uh, uh, framework or library here. We we'll just create a very simple module and a very simple uh, package. So if you remember from our note, let me go back to the note. I mentioned that a package is just a collection of modules in folders. So, and usually it, is, it, it will have this special file called init. But it's not compulsory for a package to have that, to have that file in Python 3. But it is advisable for your package to have at least just have the file here when you're creating your package because that has been the standard. So let's see how we can create our own Python module. Or better still, let's start from by creating a Python script, then a Python module, then package. Of course, we are not going to create a complex uh, package that will make it a library or a framework. So it's going to be just a simple package. So to do that, let's start with a, with a module, with a script, sorry. So here, if I go back to my uh, Python console, I can just create a new, a new file. So this is the new, this is the old file we've been using. Let's create a new tab. So in this tab, I will just save the file. So just click on the save button here. Then navigate to wherever you want to save the file. So let me do that on my desktop. So actually on my desktop, I'm, I will just create a new folder. And then I'll call that folder maybe uh, something like uh, uh, Q. Since we're in the GIS, here, well, let me say QGIS Python project. Let me say projects with this. So I will open up the folder. And then, as you can see, the folder is empty. So let me just create one single folder that I'm going to call maybe 01. Then it's going to be my script folder. Let me just call it 01 script. Then inside the script folder, I will save this Python file. I will just call it something like uh, my QGIS script my QGIS script and notice that the extension is going to be .py extension so save so you can see that this is actually save so let me open it up in the explorer so that you see how the file looks like so I will navigate I will navigate to the desktop and then I call it QGIS project and this is the content of the file so the script folder has this file so it's going to be a simple file that will just contain just a bunch of simple uh, print uh, statement and then just a document string that will look like this. So all I have here is just a document string. You can see this string is surrounded by three triple quotes, three quotes from the beginning, three quotes at the end. Then in between I have, this is a Python script that it should be that prints hello world so it's as simple as that i just have a variable name here called software name that is assigned to qgis uh, string and then i have a print statement that has the f string function that display the variable set on top so it's just a simple uh, python file so if i call it if i run it all it does is just print hello and then whatever the name here is, whatever the software name is, it prints it out on the console. So this is a simple script. The reason why I won't call this a module is because I am not intending to import it in another Python file. So hence, it is just a Python script. And better still, I can make use of this uh, interactive uh, input to make sure that the script is interactive instead of just uh, 
printing the statement there. So if I replace the string with input, enter software name, I think that should make it an interactive that you have to run it to work with it instead of just importing it in another file. So now let's move on and then create a module. So remember, a module will just be a simple Python file that you intend to import in another Python uh, file. So, or in another Python environment. So let's open up a new tab and then let's create a module. So I'm going to save it inside the QGIS Python project. But this time around, I'm going to call the project folder, maybe folder 2. 2, and then I'll just call it module. Modules. So this is just for uh, clarity sake. So inside here, I'll call it uh, maybe my QGIS. Uh, maybe mode mode one that's mode one for mode one my QGIS mode one so if I save it so it is currently empty if I go back to the explorer then you see how it is in the folder so this is just a simple Python file inside the folder called 0 to modus so let me quickly insert some content here that will make it something that has sense that we can import and then play around with it within the console. So let me type in some content. So here I just type in from the first, from the top, I just type in the document string. And then I type in some variables. So these are like magic methods or magic uh, attributes so any attribute that start with underscore underscore then followed by the name then end with underscore underscore is called a magic uh, attribute or magic method in python so and then we have several of them and some of them are what we are seeing here so underscore underscore author i just add in my name then version i add in the version then i set a file name to also another magic uh, attribute which is underscore underscore name so this will this will dy dynamically get the name of this file then i have another object this is actually just a dictionary and then the dictionary is called nigeria and then inside the dictionary i have the name of the country the latitude the longitude and then the pop the population so this stands for the population so if i save it if I run it, you see that nothing happens. So the intention of this file is for it to be imported and used in some other files. So remember, a, a module should contain a module can contains variables, functions, classes, constant, and so on. If you recall our definition. And if you recall what we have seen in some other modules that we have checked on previously. So here our module just contains a document string. Then it has some data which are stored in variables. And then later on we are going to add a function and then we are going to add a class. But for now let's work with this and see how it works. So for me to import this in my Python environment, I just need to say import then the file name but let's let's see what will happen if i type in import and then the name of the file the, the name of the file is my qgis mode one so let's make sure that the spelling is correct actually let me go back to the folder and then copy the copy the name exactly so that i don't make any type yeah, so the name is correct. I press enter. So when I hit enter, you see that I have an issue. So the error says module not found. No, no module named 
my QGIS mode one. So this is actually true because whenever you open up the Python environment, whenever you are working in a Python environment, when you import a particular module, Python usually looks into some specific uh, places to get that the name of the module. So in this case, this namespace called my QGIS mode one is not within the names within the places or within the namespace that Python is looking at in this case. So it means we have to tell Python that okay, look at this place, look at this directory, and then import this very file or this very module that we have created. So some of the places that Python looks at when you import a module can be found within the sys module. So when I say import sys, that's a system module. So the sys.modules is one place that Python looks at. So when you import a module, Python will first of all look at this, look at the content of sys.modules. That is this. And then this is just a dictionary. It's a dictionary that contains a bunch of parts and bunch of uh, modules that are were imported into the Python environment. So if it doesn't find the file here, then it will look at another place called part. So sys.part is also another place that Python will look at. This is actually a list of directories. So Python will look at every content every folder inside this list for this file. If it doesn't find it, then it will return module not found. So just take note of that. Let me paste. So when you import, Python will look at this and then look at the content of sys.part. So if the files are not, if the file you imported or the module imported are not in this location, then you get an error that module is not found, just the way we have it here. So how do you solve it? So the easiest way to solve it is to add this part to the list of sys.part. So this list, if you add the part to where your local module is located, Python should be able to read or import the file the module correctly. So and to do that, since this is a list, we can actually check the type of sys.part to see what it is. So it's a list. So since it's a list, we can append the directory to this module, to that list. So I will just say sys.part.append and then I will copy the part to that module, which is here. I'll just copy it directly from here and then paste it right here. So now, when I import the module, it should work correctly. So as you can see, this is exactly returned without any error. So now it now means we now have access to all of this information inside our Python environment. So here it means I can access the author, I can access the version, and I can access the dictionary and other information that may be in the module that I have imported. So let's check the DIR of my module. So my QGIS mode one. So you can see inside inside it we have the auto, we have built-ins, we have the cached, we have the doc, we have all of this bunch of magic methods and attributes or other variables or objects that we have defined. So technically speaking, these are even called data. So if I do help on the module, let me say help on my QGIS mode one, you will see that I have all of this information defined when I call the help. So help on mode, my QGIS mode one. So the name of the module is this. And then as you can see, the document string we typed in here is showing here. 
then the data we defined inside the module we have the file name we have the nigerian dictionary which is here it's also defined here we have the version which is this 0 0.1 we have the author so all of these information are defined right there then we have the file part you can see this is the file part of the location of where the file where the module is on our local machine so let's see how we can work with some of the data we have defined here so to actually work with any of this i just need to call the module name and then either the variable or the functions or the class i have defined so i will just say mode one dot then maybe i will say file name file underscore name I run it to give me the content of this variable or data so i can also do this the same thing for other predefined data such as the doc string the document the file the version the author and any other data that i've defined or python has defined by default so let's 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 actually check the author so my module name underscore underscore author then underscore underscore to return the author's name so the same thing for the version if i do the same thing for the version it should return it should return the version we have defined inside the file so version i think i made the typo the version and then you can see that it returned version 0 0.1 so we can also access the dictionary so here the module name dot the name of the dictionary is <coughs> nigeria in this case to return completely the content of the dictionary if i want to return just specific item within the dictionary all i need to do is the square bracket and then i'll call the name and then item i want to access from the dictionary so here i got the name i can get the lat that's the latitude value I can also get the longitude value also. So let me try the population. Just see population. And then I get the value. So this is how to work with the module. So let me actually define a function and a class. So I will simply do it like this. So I will save it. And then here I have added the function. And then I have added a class so since we have not covered what classes are i just added just a very simple class template I, with, without any method or attribute so here i just i just use the pass statement to avoid causing error so the class name is my class name the function i added is called hello from then it's a, it accepts a parameter called a country so if i do a dir on the module you see that i don't have the newly defined uh, function and classes within the content of the dir this is because the module has to be reimported if i really want this to be available so even if i say import module and then i go back i check the dir you see that the newly defined variables or objects are not available so this is because the module was imported before they were defined so to solve this i need to reload i need to reload this module so i'm going to import the import library and then i will use the import library the reload function or method to now reload this very reload to reload the module that we are working with so import lib dot reload so this has now reload the module and i can now check the dir so you can see that i now have the hello from function and then i should have the class function 
the class uh, name that I have defined here. So to access the function, I just need to call the module name module dot. Then I will now say hello from. Then since it's a function, I need to open and close the braces. Then remember that the function accepts an argument. So if I run it down without the argument, I will get error that there's some positional. I'm missing a position one positional required argument. So to solve that, I just need to put the positional argument. Maybe I can put something like type something like Nigeria, and then it will return the content of the function, which prints out hello from then the country name. I can go back and maybe change the text to something like Ghana. And if I run it, it should say hello from Ghana. So this is how you create a module and then import it into another Python uh, script or Python environment and then work with it. So I can go ahead and then add more objects, add more dictionaries like this. So here I've added a couple of other dictionary uh, objects for the country Egypt, Ghana, Botswana, Kenya, and then one unknown country. And all the items or all the items of the dictionary are defined accordingly. So if I go back and I check the DIR, I will not see Kenya, Botswana, Ghana, Egypt within me. So I have to reload the module first. So to do that, I just call the import lib dot reload then the module name. And then now if I check the DIR, I should see all the newly created objects, which are Botswana, Ghana, unknown is there, Egypt is there, Kenya is now there. And then I can assess them as usual by typing the name of the module, which is QG. QGIS mode one dot maybe I will say Egypt Egypt and then you can see that the content of Egypt is returned. If I need to return just a particular item from the content of Egypt, let's say the longitude of Egypt, I just need to type in a square bracket the longitude the long and then i get the value the longitude of egypt so this is how we work with a module so let's move on to create a package so i'm going to open up the explorer go back to the project folder and then create a new folder i'll just call it number three and then i'll call it package so remember in the case of a package you need to have uh, a special uh, file called the init inside it even though it's not compulsory to have it when you're working with python 3 but as a standard i usually create that init file because it makes it easy for other developers to know that that folder is actually a python package so if i go back to my Python environment and then I'm, I will create a file then save it right inside the packages uh, folder so this file I'm going to call it underscore underscore i n i t underscore underscore so this is just an initialization file and what it does is that anything you have here whenever you import the package into the Python environment. Whatever the whatever content is here will, will be executed immediately. So let me prove it to you by just by maybe calling something like uh, let me just add a print statement. So print something like hello from QGIS. Python. There may be a package. Yeah. 
something like this. So I will just save it. And then I'll create a new file. This new file, I'll just call it main. I'll save it in the same directory. Then I'll call it just main.py. So when I call it main.py, and then I can I can type in my Python codes here and then execute it. So let me just type in a simple print statement. That'll just print out uh, maybe one, two, and then three. So if I run it, of course, it will print out one, two, three. But now what I really want to do is is to import this package. I want to import this uh, this folder. I want to import this very folder in my Python environment. So what I need to do now is to do something like uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, I don't think I'm doing the right thing. I think what I should do is actually create like a model let me let me see what i can do here let me model let me model the the world the world map yeah i think i'm going to model the world map i'm going to create a folder for the world then create sub sub folders for the continents so i think it will be easier to explain what the package is that way so if i go back here i'll create a folder inside the packages Inside the package folder, I'll create a folder called world. Then inside the world folder, I'll create subfolders. Maybe one for Africa, another one for Asia, then another one for Europe, Europe, and then another one for maybe America, America, and then what other continent do we have? We have Africa, America, Asia, Europe. Until we have another one called Oceania. Oceania. I'm not sure of the spelling, but that doesn't it doesn't really matter. What matters is the concept I'm trying to pass. So here we have we have uh, packages what for the entire thing to be really considered as a Python package we need to have inside it this init file so the init file makes the whole of this directory a package and then the whole of this as sub packages or sub directories so we'll have a main file. So it, the main file is where we are going to run the entire code that imports all of this. So inside each of these subdirectories or sub packages, we also need to have the init file. Even though it's not compulsory in Python 3, but we'll still make use of it. So remember I told you that the content of the init file is actually the first thing that will be uh, that will be executed whenever you import the package. So let me open up this package in my Python uh, environment. So here I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to open up the, one, the init file. And then now I'll, I'll open up the main file too. So I think we are good to go. So this is I'll change this statement to print hello from QGIS uh, package yes this is okay let me from QGIS Python package I think I'll just I'll just leave this the way it is then I'm going to create some other packages this I will save it inside Africa so it's going to be underscore underscore I N I underscore underscore dot py file so save it then i'll have this statement print 
from Africa. Let me just copy it to save time. So I'll say print hello. Print hello. Hello from Africa. Let me just say hello from Africa. So let me quickly copy the init file into that of Asia, America, Europe, and then Oceania. So now that we have all the init files inside all the sub packages, I think uh, we are good to go. So let me quickly demonstrate how you can now import this package. So remember the package name is called uh, world. So actually I just need to go and say something like import Import word. Make sure you spell it correctly. It's capital data for the word. So if you go back to the folder name, you see that the first word there is capitalized. So make sure the spelling is correct. If not, you will not. It will be imported correctly. So import word. Save and then run. So if I run it, it says module not found. So this is because this particular folder is not in the Python namespace. So it means we have to go back and add it to the sys.path list, just the way we did it earlier on for the module we imported. So we'll just go back and say sys.path.addend. So I'm going to append the raw version of the folder path. So enter then now if i now go back and import world sorry if i go back now and then run this you can see that it ran successfully because the import the part has now been recognized to this package folder and then it imported the content of this uh world folder so this world, the content of this world folder was imported. And then now I now have hello from GIS, QGIS Python package, which is this particular initialization file located right here. So immediately I imported it, it ran the content of this file. And then it also print out the line below the import statement like this. So if I if I comment out the import line and then I execute it, you see that it should not print out the content of this init file. So that is the importance of having an init file. Now if I try to do something like import, uh, let's say we are going to we want to import one of these packages. Let's say America for example. America. So all I need to do is just to say import the world package and then from the world package import america so if i say import world dot america save run you see that it imported world america and that is why it ran hello from america because inside the american folder or the american uh, package will have this init file and the content of the init file says print hello from america so the same thing too for africa if i change this to africa if i change it to africa save run 
it will print hello from Africa. That is the content of the init file. So that is why we need the init file inside the, the package, inside our Python package. So that is one essence of having the init file inside the Python package. So we can have any code at all that we want to run immediately. We can actually put it in the init file. With this, it means we can import this very module from the Africana package. So if I if I go back, you can even have sub folders here, the sub packages, and then you can import them based on the structure of the files or the folders you have created. So with this. I think uh, you have seen that we have about three different ways we can import a module or a package in Python. So the first is by importing the module as a whole, and then the next is by importing specific uh, objects, that's variables, functions, or classes from the module. And then we can also, from the module name, from the module name, import everything inside the module. So let's see. I think we, we have been doing this all this while. But now let's see how we can import maybe just a variable or a function directly from the module. So let's go back to this module here that we have. I think uh, the module I created earlier was this. Uh, my QGIS module one. So instead of saying import my QGIS module one, so instead of instead of doing this, which is exactly the first way of importing a module to import it as a whole, you can actually import a specific variable or a function. Or a class or any object from the module so let's see how we can do that so here we have a function let's 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 say we let's let's say we want to import import this directly Botswana so instead of importing the module and then saying something like module dot the module name dot Botswana so we're going to import Botswana directly and then we'll just we'll do that by saying from the module then import any of the objects. You can say import Botswana, for example. This is giving us an error. But here I think I have a typo here. So this is supposed to be from, not from. So from the module name import uh, the object, which is a, which is a dictionary object in this case. So if I now type in Botswana directly, I have the content. I can just type in Botswana and then get the latitude value, just like that. Type in Botswana and can get the population value, just like that. So. I can also import multiple uh, objects. So I can type it like this from the module name import Botswana, then maybe Ghana, then maybe Nigeria, comma, then maybe let's say Kenya. Comma. So if I do that, I now have the objects directly to work with. So I can see Kenya, then I have the data for Kenya. I can see Kenya dot for Kenya, the square bracket, then get, get the longitude of Kenya. Then that will report, that will return the longitude value of the Kenya. I can also do that for uh, uh, the functions and then the classes. So you can say from from the module import hello hello from 
Yeah, it should work fine. So hello from. Then I can say America. And then if I run it, it run the content of the function for me directly. So that is how to import. So that is how to import specific objects from a module. So we can also say import all. So the, usually this all is replaced with the star. So from the module name import star. Star means all. So I can say maybe from from the module name import all. So if I do this, I will see that I now have access to the class. I have access to the function. I say function. I call the function hello from. I say maybe India. This should work. If I I can even call this unknown because it is it it's imported all. If I call unknown. It should return all the uh, items within the dictionary unknown. So I can just call. I can even call file name directly, and it will work. So, but usually, if you have a very huge uh, uh, module or library or package to import, usually it's not advisable to, for you to import everything, especially if you are not going to make use of everything that is there. So, it's better you just import the few objects that you are sure of working with. And the reason why it is frowned upon to import everything is because you can easily fall into name collision. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So you can also import a module and then give it an alias name. So for example, you can say import a module name as MN or from a module name import a variable as V. So let's take a look at. So let's assume we want to import uh, Nigeria as N as ng for example so i can simply say something like from module name import nigeria and then i'll just use the keyword as ng so it means this name nigeria has now been replaced by these two letters ng and then i can easily say ng dot or ng since it's a it's a dictionary i could say ng dot name and then it should give me the name nigeria or i can easily say ng dot pop for the population of nigeria and then that should give me the population value for nigeria i can say ng and then get the latitude value of nigeria i can even import i can even change the name of this module entirely if I say something like uh, import the module name as maybe M, so it means M has been replaced with this. I can easily say something like M dot, uh, maybe something like uh, let me use Ghana this time around, M dot Ghana. That will return all the objects or all the items within the Ghana dictionary. I can even say m dot hello from then maybe I can give just any country maybe something like China and then that should run and then replace the country with uh, China so that is how to go about importing a module and then changing the name it is in, the reason why this is, is important is to avoid a name collision so typically you can see that uh, we have the usually a popular import. We have the maths module, which has a, the square root a function. So we also have the same module, which has the square root function, which is the C maths module. So this is the complex maths, while this is the normal maths. So I think in most cases in GIS, we usually make use of this, not this. But you should be aware of something like this. And then also, the reason why you, you would like to 
change the name is to make the type to make your typing faster or make it easier for you to type a longer model names so it is typical for people working with pandas to always import pandas as pd so let's see what we have here with this uh, maths mode so if i go here let me clear the console so if i say import maths so typically from maths i imported the square root so it means i can now do something like uh, the square root of 25 which should give us 5 so this is correct but if i mistakenly imported the complex maths if i imported the square root from the complex maths like this and then i decide to check the square root of 25 i will get a different figure so this is why it is necessary for you to make sure that the namespace are different for whatever you are, you are doing so if you need to import both of these then it is wise for you to give a different namespace a different name for the model you imported so we can simply say okay import the normal maths the normal square root from mass module and then import the c the square root from c math module as maybe c square root sqrt so now there will be no any conflict if you check for sqrt as the square root of 25 it should be 5 then if you really want to make use of the uh, complex mass square root you just need to add the c before the square root of 25 and then what you call it you get your figure correctly the way you want so the names will not be overwritten and then you can use both at the same time so all we have been doing so far is using the absolute import so we say from the module name import this or import so so module so all these are absolute import you can even import uh a submodule inside the module for example we can say import world dot africa to import it directly just the way you have seen it earlier so but you can also make use of the relative import where you can say something like uh, from dot that is maybe from, for example something like from dot import then uh, a module So what this is I'm not going to talk much about this because the video has actually exceeded the time I planned for it. But there is a useful link here where you can go look up and then read more about uh, absolute and the relative import. But all we have done so far are absolute imports. And then you can take a look at the relative import. So the, it's not a, a difficult thing to wrap your head around. But in most cases, you will only be using the absolute import, which looks like this. From whatever module name import or import an object. While in the case of uh, the relative import, you are going to be using something like dot, the dot notation. So the dot, single dot, usually means the current directory. And then, but if you want to go like up the parent directory, you, you, you usually have a two dots so from dot dot import the module name so usually that is just the difference so i'm going to stop here and then i hope i'll be able to cover uh, a lot in this uh, episode so thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one bye bye